This is the moment I live for, and I know it's the moment my clients will never forget. It's the moment the client gets to see their home for the first time. This is after we finished building the home, and now we've also furnished it. We welcome you to see what they see when they arrive, and this is the reveal. are at Wolf Creek Ranch, surrounded by the Uintas. Last time we saw what's in here behind me, the big house. Today we'll look at the art studio, the hunting lodge, and the guest house. Let's take a look through the snow. This is what makes it fun around here. Let's do this. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is the pond they put in, and you've got to notice the bridge. It's so cool. It makes you feel like this property has been here forever. I think you're gonna see why she needed her art studio after I show you the hunting lodge. This is probably the smallest building you've ever seen, but it is full of exactly what she requested. She's the artist, he's the hunter. Let's go in and see. She's up to something I know. This is definitely not just for looks. She's really using the space. You can see her palette here. I wanted to surround the space with the utensils that she actually uses not really relying on props to make it interesting. You can see all of the different colored paint brushes. This is the kind of palette she uses. She loves color and especially red. Well, for me, it all started with the buffalo. Now this time, this one's made out of metal and steel. I found this in Denver, Colorado, along with the Indian I showed you last time. I just thought there had to be a lot of interest and, and action on this really cool, old looking stone wall. You could see we did red in here for our cool little refrigerator. It's not easy when you don't have any room for shelving and upper cabinets. So we felt like we could afford to put a very seamless glass shelf in front of these windows. I think that works sometimes, especially in small places. I can still see out and still see the beautiful quaking aspens just outside. We always need to have some facility, but it doesn't have to be big and it doesn't have to talk too much. So you can see this tiny little stove top meant really just for tea. And then we have a microwave, an apron front sink with one of these kind of faucets that feels like an old watering trough. And then, as I mentioned, the red little refrigerator. We love this little kitchenette, and I think it makes her feel like she can spend the day here and not have to go all the way back, especially if there's snow. I had to make this cozy for her because she spends a lot of time out here. So this is her kitchenette, and then there's a cute little bathroom I want you to see. Of course, we went with an animal hide wall covering to sort of connect the two. We covered this in reclaimed wood. And then this area here is her photo studio and a place just to relax and look out to those gorgeous Uintas. Generally, we wanted everything to look old and aged and not too formal. So you can see these antique red chairs, these stools are so cool in the space. Even the furniture is unfinished looking. And we have the modern version of a potbelly stove. I think she spends a lot of time in here. It makes me happy to think that I've given her a space where she can do what she loves and create. 
Designing this island in the middle of the space was critical. She needed an easel, a place where she could sit and paint if she got a little tired. It had to be cozy. We needed electricity here. It was all handled, but you can't tell. It's all seamless through the piece itself. And we put it on casters so she could move it around if she needed to in this very small, cozy space. I love the ceiling. You can see that again, it brings in that rusticity and the reclaimed wood. All those colors mixed with the stone on these walls is really where you feel the Western theme come out at this ranch. And that's really where we are. This is an ode to the West. Their real home is in California and it's more of a city home compared to this retreat at Wolf Creek. There's nothing like it. You have to drive 30 miles to get to a grocery store, but hey, you're rural, you're rustic, and it feels really energizing. I love the leather on this light fixture. It's old and crude suede. And actually, this is not an antique light fixture, but it looks like it. I love the way this centers the space and gives light, but we really counted on these track lights from the 70s to give us the light we really needed. Here is an example of one of Jennifer's pieces that she's working on. It's always about fun. That's the kind of thing she likes to paint. Oh my gosh, here's where she's coming from. Look, this is the image of her family having a great time on a trip. And there we have what it's going to look like. Really sweet. All right, now this is one of the hides that the owner got himself. I wanna say it's an antelope, but I don't know much about it. But I love the idea of layering all of these rugs together and creating a very informal setting in this very cool, relaxing art studio. These chairs really told the story. I mean, they're undercooked, they're unfinished. We've got linen upholstery, burlap, exposed wood and casters. These are really comfortable, but they also look like it'd be just fine if you ended up with paint on them. Okay, my biggest job was to find an antique art shelving drawer system. It wasn't easy, but man, this really gives the essence of antiquity in this old art studio vibe. This very room is a statement of really trying to deliver what the client needed and wanted right from the beginning. And now we'll go to his side of things and see what he wanted. All right, this is the caretaker's cottage. This was really fun to do because it was much, much smaller than the big ranch style home we talked about last time. I love that I could fill it with a lot of things to look at, texture, old things, new things, and precisely the rugs that I love. So as you look around, you'll see the texture. I start with this sofa with way too many pillows, but this is the style of the home. You can see the undercooked sofa a lot like what I used over in the art studio. We have burlap exposed below in this kind of mattress style form, and then contrasting that with velvet. I love all of these textures together, the red, the brown wool. It's meant to feel a little bit like a Ralph Lauren authentic cottage. And I guess when I approached this, I just went all in collecting artwork that was really interesting. You'll see a variety here. I always like to mix in old vintage mirrors as well. We love seeing the hide on this stool. Look at this gorgeous skin right here. I just love the way that contrasts these old leather chairs. If you can believe it, I found these chairs in Laguna Beach at a really cool store, but I had to get them the minute I saw them. I love that they're old and crackly and have all of these studs still on them. And then this is a hand-stitched old piece of fabric. I guess the idea is that we feel worn, we feel comfortable when things are used. And that's what I wanted to bring to this special little cottage. 
you'll see in almost all the rooms that I've done, I've had beads about, and they're really just a collection of um, an authenticity, more intrinsic to Africa. You'll see when we show you the hunting lodge that they've been to Africa many times. And so this is part of the story of their lives. And I love this old looking coffee table that was really just a replica of one that I had found and could not purchase off of first dibs. So we just recreated the buckles and the ironwork and the finish to make it look old. I just love this art, this kind of art that you might have thought was too traditional and maybe um, a little old fashioned is just precisely the texture I needed in the home. I don't even mind that the canvas is rumbly. I love the ornate frame up against this rustic, masculine fireplace. I was so happy that they were willing to just put the TV over here in the corner. Why not? It doesn't have to always be the focus of our lives. Okay, we've got a deer antler. Hey, we're in the West. You're going to see an antler chandelier. I still like it. I think it's appropriate for the space. Again, remember, you're in the mountains. Our tendency is to always look up, but I always wanna make sure that what's below us is gorgeous too. So we went with a circle sawn white oak floor, and I love the texture that gives and the forgiveness that it provides. If we have a dog, if we live here a long time, who cares? Let's show the age of living here. You can see that I just threw a bunch of different rugs. All of them are old and vintage. And remember, rugs just aren't that precious. They can be cleaned, but it's okay to get them a little dirty too. They can handle that kind of use. I wanna show you the drapes. This was my favorite idea. Okay, I did not want a regular drapery rod. I thought it'd be really cool if we got these huge drapery rings and hung this wool Ralph Lauren fabric on an actual limb from a tree. So this is, I believe, a quaking aspen branch and it's long and it was perfect. I don't know what guy tromped in the snow to get that for me, but I really appreciated that. The truth is the people that live here have traveled and they've collected along their travels. I wanted the spaces that I designed to sort of radiate that and express that so that they could live amongst that kind of texture. And it all started with the fabrics I chose. We have Navajo prints, we have Italian prints, we have African. Um, all of these different patterns together just make it interesting and make it seem like they've traveled the earth and they have. The dining room is so special. Once again, a trip to Atlanta and I was able to find this set of old dining chairs. Literally, most of my clients would not be happy with a chair whose cushion looked like this. I mean, they were willing to let me give them the look and the feel that I had in mind. And I really appreciate it. This is going to last a little while and I could repair it if I need to, but I'd much rather see this undercooked, unfinished, used look inside this space. You can see all the ornate in this walnut wood that's kind of fancy, but it's broken down and it's sort of ruined and that's what makes it approachable and easy to use and not fussy. The dining table is old too and you can see these big knobs on the legs. I love the structure. I popped in this white lantern to give us some contrast to lighten things up a bit. It's hanging from a rustic ceiling of timber and reclaimed wood. So I needed to lighten it up a hair. And then I found these old cement urns that have old moss in them. I didn't really change a thing. Packing this up wasn't easy because we didn't want them to break, but you can see that it's been kept exactly like they were. And these were an antique I actually found in Italy. I'm always looking. I have to buy it when I see it because I could never ever go out and find it. Then the kitchen 
had to be small. We are really in a small space. The first thing we did in the kitchen was decide we would use this old terracotta brick in the ceiling. We thought that would look so interesting and contrast all the wood. I love the colors it brings. Again, it brings in that rusty red that the client loves and I do too. Take a look at the countertop. It's not what we're doing nowadays with the solid slab material. Instead, it's pieces of tile with grout joints. We don't ever do that anymore. And that's why I thought in a guest house, we could bring back the past and add that little bit of integrity. I loved having exposed shelves. Again, the story of my life is a self-service kitchen. Make it easy. We don't really have a lot of storage space, so we had to use it. Inside the kitchen, we decided to use our brass pendants, which are brand new, but they, they imitate a very traditional pendant. Once again, we're using Sonoma Forge as our faucet. This is what I use when I want it to look a little bit like outdoors, a little bit like a trough filler. And I love this copper finish introduced when I have a room with terracotta and copper. It's beautiful. I love the apron sink and I just wouldn't have considered anything else because it might have been just too modern in this place. I guess you can see I don't mind exposing the glasses. I think let's live here. And then of course we've got a hidden refrigerator with the most beautiful hardware that's already worn. I love when it's a natural finish of bronze so that it shows the age over time. And of course hiding it is a must. The hood is actually another key component to the look and feel of this kitchen. It's all of solid brass, dirty and aged, and we have the clavos here and the pieces, so there's texture rather than too clean and too perfect. I often get the silliest question. It's, where do I put my hand towels? Now, if you're not just putting them by the sink, I love adding a towel bar right at the end of the island and just hanging them there. And of course, I like cute ones that have a little interest to them. Let's go to the master suite. Oh my gosh. Okay. I don't know what came first in this room. Mm. Gosh, it might have been the chandelier. Um, I loved that it was made of all bark. I mean, it's just, I don't even know how they put it together. If you look close, you can maybe see some glue, but I knew this would happen in this space. And then I fell in love with the elegance of the bed. Um, you might remember from the first house that I showed you that this client wanted it to feel rustic and elegant. So even in this space, I had to bring in that sense of luxe and refinement amongst all this wood and reclaimed ceiling. And even we've got the chinked wood on the walls in this space. That's because the exterior of this house and the interior are the same wall. So this is what we call chinking, which is all of this plaster material in between all the wooden logs. It's a true log cabin. It's unique and I just love being in this space. Once again, we use the drape with the Navajo print and then the real tree branch for a drapery rod. We don't need to draw the drapes because we have the blinds once again to create the blackout in the room for our guests. This is a collection of antlers that is actually very hard to find. Um, I had to collect from different places to put this collection together. Um, it's meaningful, it's, it's old, um, and again, it's something besides artwork or paintings. Trying to find things that are more architectural or um, out of the ordinary isn't easy, but when you see them, make sure you grab them. And then this contemporary piece of art on just simply plywood. I love the buffalo head. I love how clean this is in contrast to the chinked walls above. And then we have yet another antique here that is just beautiful and looks and emulates the art studio drawers. I have to say I was given a fair amount of freedom on this project. Um, 
I mean, it's not often I can get away with a basket as the bedside table, um, but they really got it. They really understood that we needed all of those parts and pieces to make it feel real in these spaces. Look at the bedding. This is really elegance. This is actually a bedspread that instead goes over the entire bed as a coverlet attached to the skirt. I love the elegance of that. And then of course we've got our soft pillows with all the ruffles. A little informality when you make your beds is what's going to make it look more fun to jump into. So not matching everything and not putting everything perfectly in place really says comfort. You might be asking where the heck is the closet? So we had to tuck it into this space, but again, I did not want to use regular doors. So we hid it in this wood wall that looked to just be paneling, and here is the closet. I like to be a little bit tricky when it comes to closets, because they're one of the most boring things ever. <laughs> so we try to make them look good. This whole vanity look started with one inspiration picture. I saw this big heavy log, and it was rough hewn and old looking, and I didn't have one of those. So I had to go to my wood maker and we had to really literally just abuse this piece of wood to get it to look softened in the space. Then we dropped in the copper sink with its own copper backsplash. We had to custom make this sink out of the copper, but it was the making of this experience. Finding a cool mirror that didn't look like it matched. I mean, that's really the story of these homes on this ranch is we weren't matching, we were just doing the right feelings together. Things are mismatched, but that's what makes it cool. I love these fisherman lights made of copper yet again, and you see the nuts and bolts, the industrial side of these lights with the Edison bulb inside. It's very warming to the space. Once again, we are layering rugs. We've got the hide on top of the antique rug, but what's under those rugs is so cool. It's the red terracotta tile. Again, going with something similar in the kitchen, in the ceiling, and then bringing it back again into the floors here. And again, in the days gone by, we used a ton of grout. Today we would say, oh, bump those tighter, but I wanted to be authentic to the past. Oh my gosh, we had to do another tub for two. And it emulates the old cast iron tub look. In the guest house, we didn't quite go that far on expense. And I think this acrylic tub does the trick. I love that we did the exposed hardware with the telephone hand spray. And then we just took the limestone and layered that up onto the wall with graceful curves that really speak traditional. With the weight of this big, heavy piece of wood at the countertop area, I didn't want to use closed cabinets underneath. I felt the need to lighten it up below by leaving open shelves. And I don't mind leaving the towels easy at hand so the guests really know where to grab them.
Okay, now, I wasn't offended when they didn't ask me to design this part. This is a hunting lodge. I do not know a thing about designing a hunting lodge, but I knew it would be forthcoming. I finished the ranch house, I finished the art studio, and then the guest house. And then I left, and this happened. Wow! <laughs> and there's more to come. I've loved working on a ranch style home and really participating in what it is to make a Western, warm, rich experience. The contrast between my projects is exciting. This is one of my favorites. It's the most different. I'm so happy to share it with you. I'm Anne-Marie Barton for The Reveal.